Hey there, gang. We've taken a quick look at Next War Korea, and I thought I would pull out the C3I 27, number 27 collapse scenario and make whatever adjustments we needed to to that and have a look at what would happen if uh, the uh, leadership of uh, North Korea was deposed or indisposed or removed and um, how how that would play out and that's what this particular scenario is about so the PRC will come in from the north and attempt to capture the two hexes of Pyongyang and the ROC and US allied forces will advance from Seoul and try and capture two hexes of Pyongyang. This is a three player scenario so uh, all sides are going to get to move and play. The North Koreans are fighting against both the PRC and the Allies. And I'm using also using the reality mod on this just to kind of give us a real feel for the in somewhat less capable North Korean forces. I don't expect the North Korean forces to stand around long, but I am curious to see what will happen when the larger division sized forces of the Ameri the uh, People's Republic of China see those big bad boys there, 18, 15, eights when they start uh, interfacing with the uh, brigade scale and some of the divisional scale forces from the US and of course the uh, the other allies, the ROC forces as well. So should be pretty interesting. Uh, I'll be posting general updates on the, on the blog and on Facebook, just pictures of what's going on. But then I'm gonna try and wrap this all around a narrative that is based on the current affairs as they stand today and some of the news reports that are coming out, we'll try and see if we can't weave in some sort of cool little story there to make it more interesting and fun. That's, uh, I've had uh, the uh, press secretary, whatever his name is, uh, Spicer, uh, on in the background while I've been playing this morning. So it's been uh, very entertaining as the U.S. forces just uh, took it to the, uh, the Chinese Air Force. So this game, for for gameplay purposes, is actually a little bit of a challenge. Uh, what you, once you get it all set up, the ta the tactics and strategy here is pretty tricky. Well, it's not going to be a problem once we actually get into combat with these guys, uh, but it's choosing where to focus your effort and in, in terms of trying to achieve the goals because moving some or all of these forces rapidly up this main highway which you know the red roads are going to give us uh, for mechanized is going to give us one third movement point cost uh, we need to get to seoul as quickly as possible to prevent the chinese from capturing it chinese don't have to move terribly far to get there but they do have uh, post pre-move they do have very many uh, weak uh, d uh, north korean dprk units in the way and uh, so these guys have got to fight their way in. There are more uh, uh, PRC units on the way. There are those forces there on the left-hand side. Uh, that's out of focus. There you go. So lots and lots going on in this game. The uh, short distance to travel, larger, more uh, detailed, not detailed, but uh, you know, heavier hitting units, but no air support. And so I think uh, the US will probably try and interfere as best they can with the the PRC efforts to move, etc. But they've got to be careful uh, how they do that because uh, neither side is allowed to attack each other's headquarters or uh, or anything like that uh, unless it's with uh, special ops. Uh, there's no cruise missiles being thrown at each other because that would potentially escalate into a third world war. Until such time as both sides actually engage in land combat against each other and then well, the gloves are off and it's, it's on for young and old. So the Americans have got to be careful because I really think in a, in a land battle they might be outclassed or outmatched here. Uh, they'll certainly have no issues cleaning up the rock forces uh, and, and getting up here. It's just a matter of how quickly they can do that. 
and the rock player, uh, sorry, the rock player, uh, the DPRK uh, forces will be cleared out pretty quickly, but the DPRK have got to kind of hang on as best they can. If they can keep uh, one or both hexes of uh, Pyongyang, that's great, but they also need to try and keep control of their nuclear research and chemical weapons labs and things like that. They get VPs for those things, get VPs for killing uh, enemy units as well. So the DPRK are, are looking to uh, slow the action down here and to the north and then potentially counter, uh, actually launch an offensive in the glare-ridden portion of the map over here. So they're going to try and push in here and try and cut off some of the supply and support for the... Uh, for the Allies to try and slow them down a little bit. So that's kind of what's going on here. We've got uh, naval forces involved. We've got uh, the uh, a, a SAG uh, and a amphibious force of Marines available to be landed in the Yellow uh, Yellow Sea. We've got na other naval forces coming, carrier wing coming in from uh, the US side. That's probably going to come into the Yellow Sea as well. So we could see some naval combat. So it's on for young and old here, and we'll see what happens. I thought I'd just give you a quick little update on on where we're at with this game, and I'll be playing this for the next uh, probably next couple of weeks. Talk to you soon.